Hey there, guys. Welcome in to a, another episode of The Collectors. I'm your host, Chad Starbuck, and um, I'm excited to be here again today, uh, just as I am for all the episodes. Uh, it's certainly a, a passion of mine to be able to uh, bring you uh, unique collectors from around the United States and uh, hopefully some point uh, around the globe as well. Um, so really looking forward uh, to today's episode. Uh, before we get started, though, just a couple of things. Um, as always, if you would, uh, if you like today's show, be sure and click that like button down below and uh, be sure and share this out with your uh, friends and family. And as always, please uh, subscribe as well so you can uh, keep up to date on all the episodes. Uh, I certainly do appreciate that. Now before we uh, jump into today's episode, just a quick little story. Um, I was recently at an estate sale and I think as we know, if we're going to estate sales, um, you really never know what you're going to come across. And uh, this was certainly one of those sales. Um, looking at the pictures, there was a lot of stuff within the, this house. Uh, and once I got there, it was certainly full of, uh, of all kinds of different items. Um, but it also had that kind of a creep factor to it as well. Uh, and that creep factor had to do with dolls. Uh, there were dolls everywhere. Um, dolls in every room. Uh, dolls in the bathroom uh, that were being stored. Uh, dolls downstairs in the storage area, dolls upstairs, kind of in a little attic spot. Uh, there were just dolls everywhere, and uh, I'm not a big fan of dolls, so uh, I stayed away from them. But uh, it was certainly a good sale. Uh, pulled out a couple of things to that uh, that are up and available on my Etsy site um, as of now, so be sure and uh, check that out at I Remember When Vintage. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into today's episode. My guest today is Jason Horinger of the Birchwood Supply Company. Now Jason resides out of the uh, Akron, Ohio area, um, and I think Jason is uh, somewhat similar to me in the uh, things that he collects and he buys and he sells, uh, in that uh, it really just has to strike him as being unique or interesting. Um, doesn't really have any sort of um, set criteria or a set niche that he's in. Um, and uh, he also has something that a lot of us, I think, would die to have, and that's an actual uh, physical uh, storefront as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into our conversation with Jason Horinger. All right, Jason. Hey, welcome into the show. Thank you so much for being on The Collectors. Uh, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think this will be a lot of fun. Um, and one of the reasons I think it'll be a lot of fun is I think we have a lot of similarities. Uh, I, I think, you know, one of the questions that I get asked a lot and, and maybe you do as well, um, is, is what is it that you collect? And I go, I have no idea. Um, it really just has to strike me as being interesting or unique. And, uh, I think you're kind of the same way. Yeah, there's not, um, you know, there are people that are real particular, you know, like, this is the thing I always go back to when I see people at flea markets, auctions, wherever you kind of find your stuff. The people that are the craziest are the people that love glass. glass <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can see that. I want nothing to do with glass. And there are so many offshoots and things, you know, I have no desire for any of it. Um, and that's why I don't ever, I think the most important thing is I don't ever want to, um, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. Yeah. Something. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, the, pr the pr only parameter for me and my guiding light is just cool. You know, yeah. to just, I, I, it needs to be, it needs to resonate with me. And if it resonates with me, then I feel comfortable again with my transparency to my clients, to social media, what I share. If it resonates with me and it's authentic to me, that's what matters. Yep. And it's and, probably going to, it's going to resonate with somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. And if, you know, and if it doesn't, that's fine. It, there's, everybody's got their own niche and that's the thing. But if it resonates with me and it's authentic and I want to show it, it comes across in a beautiful way. Yeah. And even if somebody doesn't like it, they still can appreciate the aesthetic. Like I don't like mid-century modern. Don't like the stuff. I don't like, but it's very simple, very clean. Yeah. And when it's done well, I appreciate it when it's yeah. not done well it's that's the hard part yeah yeah i i can see that i can definitely see that you've been and doing this for a while and you have you have made this your living now is that right yeah <laughs> yeah if that's yeah i think and it's a and it's a family affair for you it right? is I, my my oldest son was just sitting with me and yep. they're playing video games right now but i've got a he'll be eight he'll be eight soon and my youngest just turned six yep um yeah. And they've been with um, me since the beginning. Started with a traditional brick and mortar. I was in education for nine years. 
it was a situation that I, um, I felt the need to create a space Yep. and it wasn't, you know, yeah, you can start online, you can do these things and there's different ways to incrementally grow into your business. I felt the need to create a space. Yep. And I think that's the thing I always come back to. I don't care where I am. I don't care what I'm doing. I create a space. And that's where I think being fluid between um, genres, styles, aesthetics. When you, when you go down an alley of one thing, you're locked into that. Yeah. When it's just, again, like we talked about, when it's, you're just doing you, that ebb and flow creates a really great dynamic of space. Yep. Whether it's a small space that you're trying to curate for a social media thing, whether it's a living space, you know, if you're designing for a client, that's the, that's the thing I always gravitated towards. And that's when I, you know, it was about five years ago when I started the brick and mortar, I was in that space for probably about three years. Now I've been in this space, which is much more industrial, yep. which I like. Um, it's yep. a warehouse. It's the old BF Goodrich uh, plant. So it's a oh, bunch cool. of bunch of buildings. Um, I'm on the, I've got like a 1600 square foot space yep. and it's funny how it comes back to it where this is what I envisioned in the beginning initially, yeah. concrete floors, high ceilings, white walls. Yep. I've got natural light flooding in all the time. Um, and that's what I want, you know, so it's my workshop, which is great because I can do, I can, I, I can walk that line of both still. Cause I walk that line of, of making stuff I design and I, I'm, you know, full, I'm, I'm literally staring right in front of me two feet in front of me, which doesn't look like it in the, in the, in the picture, but you know, I've got four tables in front of me and today I'm exhausted. I just got done installing a, a, a custom bookshelf I made. Um, oh, cool. that's where the, the, everything kind of coexists where I made that bookshelf, which my skill set's growing, but I want to fill that bookshelf. And I, and I, I styled it, right. you know, I was rushing and I was running late, but I had to get it on this wall. And I had to put stuff on it because I had to take pictures of my stuff. <laughs> so, so just again, it's space and it's just on a wall. It's a six and a half foot deep, I mean, six and a half inch deep thing, bookshelf, but I had to put stuff on it. Yeah. I couldn't well, like get it out the door. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the cool thing. I mean, uh, you know, I, I really think that you've got a, a great Instagram um, you know, you, you've got a lot of cool stuff that you show off. You've got, um, you know, you, you do really nice photography, um, which is really important to be able to showcase your items. Um, but I think that's kind of what drew me to you was just seeing how you kind of, you know, you've got that, you, you definitely got that design uh, mindset to you to where it's not just things, it's yeah. how those things um, fit into either whether it's everyday life or fit on a wall or fit in a home, whatever it may be, or fit in just into a space. Um, yeah. So I think that's really cool. So you've got, you, you know, you're a collector, you're a buyer and a seller. And you, again, you collect things that you think are neat, but you've also got that design aspect uh, of taking things and, in a sense, I don't necessarily say repurposing them, but um, being able to showcase them. Yeah. It's, it, 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 walks a lot of different lines where it's, I'm able to incorporate everything into my design work. And when I first started, I had a showroom that was more of like a store. People yeah. would come in regular hours. So I was bringing stuff in yep. that I didn't really, I was half-hearted about. I thought it was cool. It would look good, but you needed to fill a space. And as the years went on, I cared less and less about that. And I cared even less of what people thought where <laughs> I have no desire, you know, I taught for nine years. So you have bosses, you have people, you collaborate, you work, but they ultimately tell you what to do if, if you're messing up. I didn't, I didn't get away from that to be, to fit into a box of, yeah. of what somebody else thinks I should do. I try, you know, the more you do it, you trust those gut instincts. I didn't know what the hell I was. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I want that to be the case, but as time has gone on, all I continually do, you, you start with that broad spectrum and then you just hone it in. And my, my tastes for things has changed. Sure. Completely. Um, and it's just become more, uh, there's a lot more detail to it. There's a lot of things I pay attention to. Um, 
I don't want to pick up box lots at auctions and have a car full of stuff that I have to sit through and then they end up sitting somewhere. Um, <laughs> I want one thing out of a box. Yeah. And I hate to say this, but my mentality, I don't do this. <clears throat> excuse me, but my mentality is I'll throw the box. I would throw the box away. I don't care. I don't, it's not, <laughs> other stuff isn't important to me. Yeah. Value to other people. And I'm not saying I throw this stuff away, you know, but there was, um, there was an auction a long time ago. I was with my sons and I didn't realize this. There were two things in there. And I, again, I was buying stuff at auctions because I, <clears throat> there were things that, you know, um, half-hearted again, but there were two things in that box that I still have that are crazy. The first one is a, is a legit Ranger um, badge. Gotcha. Ranger badge. Yep. Grass. The other one was pretty cool. And I did some research and, and I don't know if they're, necessarily fake but there's some legitimacy to it it's a, it's a brass foot tag from the Wy um from wyoming um okay. it's, it's a death tag you know yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. death tag and it's got the number but it's blank it's unmarked yeah. so i have that sitting in my um nightstand yeah um, and i didn't know those things were in there yeah and those two things are the only things i've kept and i will keep and, and it's one of those my my mentality anymore is um obviously everything's for sale for a certain price. You put stupid prices on stuff. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'll part with it. My son tells me all the time. So I have a Buffalo of a, a bison sitting above my shoulder here and I'm, I'm having some graphic work done. We're doing new t-shirts for the shop. Um, but there's this big, it's called a mule deer G N U L E. One of the first mounts I ever bought years ago. And I thought it was like smaller, like a white, a white tail size. Yeah. This thing's massive. It doesn't fit through doors. Whoa. It's massive. And I've had it since me, since day one, it's kind of turned into a mascot. Wow. My old son, you, and asked me all the time, say, Papa, like, you're, you'd put a stupid price on that, wouldn't you? Like, you, would you sell that? It's like, yeah, we'll, be, we'll sell it. If somebody wants to give me the money for it, you know, <laughs> got to be worth it. The juice has got to be worth the squeeze. And, you know, sometimes the price is going to be everybody would laugh at me for it. And that means I don't want to sell it. Right. It evolves over time. And it yeah, of much course. More a, much more of a focus. There's much more of a focus to it. And also, too, you learn your identity. Yeah. I had no identity when I got in this. I, I liked stuff. I thought I knew what I was doing and I had no clue. Um, but you just begin, you, you form an identity. And, and the more you become vulnerable and let yourself into that, you know, and like stepping away and letting this be my full-time profession and trying to create a business and a brand and some semblance of order to something, um, you know, you, you, be, you, find a, you, you begin to find an identity and, and, and delve into yourself more and more. Yeah, I think we, I think we all evolve um, over time in what interests us um, and what we collect. I'm 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 certainly just like that. The, the things I would pick up, you know, seven eight years ago, I don't even look at it anymore, yeah. um, or, or even think about it, just because it doesn't make sense to me now. Yeah. Um, and so that's you know I think that's kind of happens to all of us as we're as as we move along. Absolutely. Um, now, you know, I, I do want to get into just kind of some of the things that you um, enjoy collecting now. And, and I do know that one of the things that you're certainly well known for um, is your textiles, whether that be, you know, flags or, or canvases or anything like that. Tell yeah. us a little, about, uh, a little bit about those. You know, and how you got into that. Obviously, I love the feel and look of an old flag. It might have been three or four years ago. I was walking through the flea market. I was doing a last round and this guy had sitting on his, um, it was long, like a galley style. And on the back of his van was a plastic bag with yeah. a little post-it note. And it said a 46 star flag. 40 oh, wow. And I freaked out. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know why I freaked out, but I freaked out because it said 46 star flag. And I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. I knew it was special, but I didn't know what it meant. And it was 40 bucks, which was even better. Wow. So I bought it. I still have that flag. And then that was my jump where I started digging into it and looking. But for me, it's a, it's a marrying of the two ideas of the true story of, of, of what it is, the history. There's something to it. There is some tangible. There's something. There's some juju to it, yeah. you know. Yeah, of course. There's a feeling and it looks cool as shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when you get an old flag 
that is wool, but it looks like linen and cotton because it's so worn. Yeah. And the stars are hand stitched and they're all configured in crazy ways um, and doing some research on like late 1800s, early 1900s. And then you've got some flags that are like ten, twenty thousand dollars that I'll never touch. Yeah. I'll, I, I can't get into that world. Um, but it's the hunt, you know, finding the right deal, finding them when there's some some substance. But it was my that was my first jump. And that was like a, that flag's like 10, 12 feet long. Maybe eight feet wide. So it's a really oblong size. Yeah. And then I started digging and I, you know, then I found some 45 star flags, ones that are way too big. Like I've got one that's like 25 feet long. I can't even adequately, like I can't hang it in the shop wow. without it, you know, so I have to taper it and, and, and bow it out. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing that actually, cause I've got an open house coming. I'm doing an open house April 10th. What about that flag behind you? Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, this one's very interesting. Um, so a little while back. It was a big um, military uh, auction that I was paying attention to. There were six, two sizes of each. I've never seen a flag like this before. I have some friends. I've got somebody in Texas that I know that does a lot of flags. I've got a buddy here in Akron that's big in the military, like vintage military stuff. Yep. So I reached out to a bunch of different people. Why does this flag not have anything in the union? <laughs> right. That was my question. Why? Because there's nothing that the stars weren't taken off. You know, yeah. my best guess is one of those. I think it's dead stock. Yeah, it's just it's one old of those. Stock maybe, you know, but there's the funny thing was it's dead stock, but there's stitches to them. There's repairs done to them. But the feel, the look, everything that I've learned about, they're pretty old. Yeah. But there's, Two smaller ones, like a four by seven, two five by eights, and then two seven by elevens um, <laughs> that don't have anything in the union. But that's, it just was so unique to me and it stands out. And actually, the really cool thing about this so here, just down the road, is the University of Akron mm -hmm. um, and the Myers School of Art. And a buddy of mine, they just got done doing a gallery show um, highlighting suffrage and women's yeah. voting. Yep. And we were talking, he's like, hey, I know you have a lot of flags. Can I come by and take a look? So we started looking at these. He wanted to borrow one and I was going to loan it out to him for the show. Yep. And it's Arnie, take them all. <laughs> you don't know what size you need. Take them all, figure it out in the gallery. And he ended up using them all and hanging them up. And they went really well because they had some really, um, they had a local artist with some uh, graphic design work and some screen prints and some posters. They had some really awesome stuff. But that's where I also love Again, it's that story. It's the history behind it. It was beneficial in an art show. Yeah. I think if you look at it, you know, if you look at the industry 30 to 50 years ago in antiques and antique stores, that's not, that was never the goal. You right. know, but marrying between certain things of, um, again, and maybe it's just me and what I want to do and how things are, but I want it to serve a purpose. Yeah. And, and I've always as the older I get and with my sons and you just, I'm a communal person. And if it's going to benefit something like that, or if it's going to help tell the story for somebody else, um, I want that to be the case. I, you know, I've got a buddy coming in in a couple of days. He's going to use this space for a photo shoot because he's a chef. And um, I think it's seen I mean, Cle Cleveland magazine or something's yeah. coming in. And he asked me and most places be like, yeah, here's my hourly rate. This is what I'm charging you. I'm like, no, man, yeah, come use my space. This is, <laughs> it's, it's community. That's it's like, cool. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to, to dig money out of you. I want my, you know, if, if I can, with what I do in, in a different way, if that can help illustrate other things, I'm all for it. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, that's it's, fantastic. Yeah. Much more of a, that's, that's, an, that's the understanding I come at things with. Yeah. You know, all that other stuff takes care of itself. Well, I, I, I think we, you know, recently I've seen that as well. Um, you talk about, you know, using the flag in, in, uh, um, in an art installation. Um, but you're also seeing a lot of the vintage products, vintage things that we normally see. I have certainly um, rented out some of the items that I've had for photo shoots or, or, or different types of things like that, just because... Um, whether it's uh, the historical significance of them or the historical story that they may tell uh, fit yep. into what's 
fit into the story that that photographer or that cameraman is trying to tell. So that's really cool. It, and that's, and I think that's where, as far as collecting things and, and there's an appreciation, there's an innate subconscious understanding of the value of what it is. Yep. And I'm not, you know, and I, and I think you understand this. I'm not talking about retail value. I'm yeah. not talking about bottom line dollar. There is a value like those two circle pieces up on the wall, the wood patterns, yep. that style, those don't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> when I find them, I get sweaty. Yeah. I get sweaty and I get like flush because I know they don't exist. Yeah. And there's certain things. So the, that's the value. That's the most important thing. Um, and if it helps tell that story for somebody else, that value for me is, is better than a sale. Um, so I do want to touch on some of the other things. And, and part of the feeling that I have is some of the things that are on your back wall are, yeah. are, are some of the things that um, you're passionate about or, or your, or your, yeah. I've got so, one. I, I yeah, want to go ahead. Go ahead. Got, and, I, and I just picked this up, but uh, it, it's in conjunction with something else I've been doing. So I have this collection of photos early photos, we're talking late 1800s, early 1900s of working men, you know, just what the world was. And it was very, um, I, this moniker I started with from the beginning, starting the business Um, was start where you are. And, you know, it's for me, it was, I'm out of education. This is what I need to do. And this is what I feel I have to do. And all I have is my stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. So that is in that transition into, and I started finding these really cool photos where it was just, you look at somebody's face, that is a lifetime right there. That's a story. So I started collecting these and there was a really awesome shop down the road from my old place called Stagecoach Antiques and they closed, but they were, they were moving online. And so I, I went down and they had just packed. It was the, your quintessential beautiful antique shop where you could get lost in it for hours. <laughs> and I uh, was walking through and they had a massive section of postcards, photos, and, and they had some, a couple of boxes, like sports cards boxes, ones that I had my eyes on. So I bought them, bought the boxes up because they were liquidating stuff. That stemmed from that. So this photo behind me, I just picked up, fits in that collection. And it's a, it's a series of, I'm, I'm, can you hand me the, that photo right there, please. It's a series of nine photos of this guy. And I've been creating a backstory of him because I don't know what the heck it is, but it's a good one. <laughs> Probably late 1800s, early 1900s. The frame is beaten up, beaten up, and it's beautiful. So I'm going to try to get it in on. But this guy is something else. So it's he's the same, so it's the same guy in like all nine, nine pictures, all nine photos. Like this middle one is is perfect if you can see him. Yeah, expressive. So he's an older guy. He's an older guy. Nine photos sitting on this hillside. He's got a probably a porcelain plate. He's got a sandwich. Probably taking a break for work. And this is a guy that I envision. He probably talks himself into jobs. <laughs> he doesn't really work. This yeah. is all he does. And he's telling stories. He entertains the guys and the foreman wants to fire him, but he talks his way out of it. <laughs> and he probably shows up every other, every other day and he's probably drunk, but he <laughs> talks his way out of it. Yeah. I picked this up over the weekend and it was from a guy that was uh, in at a show, but he was from Pennsylvania. And this is what I love too. I got to talking to him. This was part of his personal collection. Oh, okay. This wasn't something he was just flipping. We started talking and he goes, yeah, this is, because yeah, this is this is something I've had for years, and I felt it was about time to part. So that was the that was a very beautiful beautiful thing of. I don't really envision myself get parting with this. Yeah. This is it's important. It's part of the collection. So it was one of those situations that it was it was it was interesting. And so and so uh, you're you've kind of started looking for working man type photos and things. Yeah. Like that. There it's, there's, you know, and obviously the fact that I work with my hands and do this yeah. and, and I have this side of the business for me, um, I gravitate to that. My, so my dad's father worked in this, in this facility for good rich oh. and, 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 and my grand and my grandfather on my um, mom's side worked for the local newspaper. And I worked for my uncle growing up. 
I learned my work ethic from him. Um, you know, he's the reason why I do a lot what I do. Um, and it's one of those situations where I naturally gravitate to that. Yeah. And I, I was working a white collar job in education, technically, you know, if you look at it that way, and I want nothing to do with that with my life. You know, <laughs> I, I want to be completely blue collar. You work in education, you don't work in the tangible. Yeah, It's hard. I work in the tangible every day now. And there's something, yeah, of course. Different, you know, when, when it's, you, you move something or you make something, all of those things. And I have gravitated towards the working man, the story of the working man, what that is, the struggle of it, because it's very hard. It's not for everybody. You have to have a strong stomach and it's, it's difficult. Well, yeah. Well, I kind of take a, I kind of take a look at, you know, the things that you, you are collecting and you're kind of bringing into your shop. Uh, to me, you, you really just have like the coolest den, uh, you know, that you, you can kind of, you kind of live in and you can kind of work in um, with just all kinds of cool things throughout your shop. Now I do have to ask, you know, uh, we, we've got to mention the bison, um, yeah. like where that came from and what's the story behind that? That one was a big purchase for me. That was a big deal. Um, cause you, you, you have these unspoken benchmarks as time goes on, you know, <laughs> you start small, you know, for me, again, going back to that adage, starting, you know, start where you are, but it's one of those situations as time goes on, you, you get a little more ballsy, <laughs> you, you push the envelope, you try to go sure. a little bit bigger, um, you think a little bit bigger. Uh, and that bison was a big deal for me. Um, it symbolizes a lot, but it was, a uh, you know, when you begin to understand the idea of an investment in your business where you have to play with fire, you know, like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, playing with fire. Sometimes when you, <laughs> you know, to make some money, you have to spend money yep. and you have to, you have to put yourself on a, on a ledge. And it's a situation of design work when you get into a high dollar or a rare situation where you're working on a high end piece, you can only make one cut Yeah, and you can't mess up. So the bison's a big deal. And it's, it's a one, it's a beautiful piece. He's massive. Um, but he, it's, it's just one of those situations of when you take a growth step, you know, emotionally in your understanding of things, when you take a step in the direction of, yeah, I'm, I'm betting on myself, <laughs> you know, and that can be said in a lot of, in a lot of different things. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, for me, and again, it goes back to, yeah, some people will look at flipping stuff and they just want to make, you know, they want to make money. They want to do certain things. There's a, there's a depth to this. It, I don't want to do something just to do it. Yeah. And I wholeheartedly believe and feel again, the transparency, the uh, belief and authenticity, the sale, the sales where people buy in will, I don't want to say take care of themselves because you have to be smart. You have to know what you're doing, but I'm not in it to be a box store. Yeah. You know, somebody contacts me on social media, somebody calls me like there's no answering service. You're not talking to employees. <laughs> you know, you're getting the guy that's sweeping the floor, doing everything else. You know, there's no grand scheme. Like you're just talking to the guy and he's also juggling his two kids and losing his mind on a daily basis. And <laughs> as I talk to you right now, I pulled an all nighter last night to finish a project and get some other stuff done. All I want to do is be authentic and do this. And people, you know, and I want, I want people to know the story and be along for the ride. And that's what I love. When you're out, you know, when you're out and about these days, if you're going to estate sales or you're going to auctions are, again, I guess it's kind of hard to pinpoint. You don't know what you're looking for uh, until you see it. Right. Uh, um, and it, it looks like, you know, you obviously kind of gravitate towards, you know, like the, maybe the, maybe the male dominated type of items that might go into a den. Can I tell you a funny story about that real quick, Chad? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Again, going back to the idea that I didn't know anything. I was, oh, sorry, Bob, just sit, down, sit still. I didn't know what I was doing. So when you open up a brick and mortar and you don't know what you're doing, I had, I don't know how to classify myself. I was just doing stuff that I thought was cool and doing my thing, but I didn't, you know, again, identity, classification, whatever. And somebody walks in early on and they told me, and they were like, this is like geared towards men. Like, this is like, 
a lot of men's and I go, well, yeah, because I'm the one doing it. <laughs> and I just, and that was, and that essentially I'm going to be honest with you. That was the level of conversation that exists yeah. between myself and the other person. And then that's where it's, I started. That's when you start to think about it, where people can identify or, or, or looking at how people see you. I don't want to necessarily put a tag on the things that I like or the things that I showcase those types of things. And you probably don't either. Right? You know, um, I'm, I'm not tr trying to, you know, have male dominated items and there's really not anything that, uh, that doesn't really make sense either. Right. Male dominated items. It, it, it's more of things that are cool, things that are interesting, things that are unique. Um, and so it, it, it's a reflection of me. Um, yeah. and so yours is a reflection of you. Um, so I, I, I think that's really cool. And I think that's, you know, how we kind of go about it, but, uh, and I think that's the interesting part too, where you don't know what you're going to look for. We are in a very interesting uh, industry where we have no wholesale. Yeah. You know, you talk about other industries, you know, you've got suppliers, you've got people that you can regularly get things from on a base on a regular basis. You know, the wholesale, the distributors are the people you meet that you're buying from. Yeah. Exactly. Whether it's people contacting you for things, whether it's going to auctions, flea markets, you get to know the people that run the estate sales. And then people start to automatically, over time, if you're consistent and you, one, you develop relationships, then they start looking out for you like, hey, yep. I'm getting this stuff or hey, this sale's coming up yep. before I post these photos. Do you want to come take a look or, you know, all of those things. You get to a flea market, somebody's got something stashed in the back that they wanted you to see before they tried to sell it to somebody else because they know, one, sure. you're going to give them money for it. And that's also, too, where it's relational that you see all too often people are so quick to say, hey, what's your best price? Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it so much with every fiber of my being <laughs> because it's, it's, it's a lot of reasons. And I look at it with the people that I've met through flea markets and the auctioneers and the people at the auction houses and every way you're developing a relationship and you're my, you're my supply chain yeah. in, in, in whatever way. So I'm also not going to come up to you and develop a relationship. And again, the working man mentality, like my favorite movie is there will be blood as dark and twisted as it is. <laughs> um, but it harkens back to that where, there's a scene where he's sitting with standard oil and they're, he's pissed. He's always pissed. That's the whole movie. <laughs> um, he's just hates everybody. He's, he's got such, such a uh, competition in him, but they're making deals. He's like, yeah, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars for this, for these two fields. He's like, yep, done. You know, so when deals are done, deals aren't done with people you don't know. Deals are done with people, you know, Yeah, and you have to get to know those people. So guess what? If you're also selling something and I see value in that, I'm not going to sit here and try to take $5 out, $5 out of your pocket. I'm there's value in it. And I see sure. that I want to develop that and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to give you that because it's worth it to me. Um, and you get to know those people and there's, you know, there's a whole, it's not a game, but it's again, a relationship. You're getting to know those people. And I also want them to know I'm serious about what I do. I'm not out here just as a weekend warrior. I'm not trying to do this just to put stuff on the marketplace on yeah. Facebook and flip stuff. Like I'm serious about the stuff I have and I love it and I want that. And if you have it, I want to be a part of it. Yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, I'm right there with you. It's, you know, it's creating relationships and, um, you know, if, if you're good to them, they're going to be good to you. That's it. And I, and that goes in anything and that's, you know, and it's just, my mom raised me that way and you treat people with, you know, the dignity and respect and everybody deserves it. I want to make sure that we, we hit on, you know, an item or an item or two that you really want to show off. Do you have anything like that? You really want to tell us about that was honestly um, the two, the two big ones behind me that the unstart flag, the no union uh, and then the bison, those two for me are, those are, you know, I want when somebody walks in, when I have the showroom finally set up or somebody walks into the to the open house, um, those for me, like I I could do every other post between an unstart flag and my bison. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I could do and, that. And you you have you have the the perfect classic couch to go with it as well. Yeah. So that's the other thing I really love. And and it's it, you get so clammy about it, but I have this old yep. old this one's not as old as I would like it to be, but it's got this really great broken in color, the camel color. Um, you know, that again, talk about that smoking room den yeah. you know, feel. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you get more classic than that. Oh, no, it's fantastic. I, I'm sitting here, so where I, you know, obviously where I'm sitting right now, in, where I staged some photos on the other side of the sh uh, shop, um, I just end up sitting in them all the time. <laughs> this is my area. <laughs> and that's, that's, I don't have a desk in here. I, I have a desk, you know, I, I thought about getting a desk in here. I don't ever do it. I don't ever do a desk. I sat at a desk for nine years and I don't want to. I'm literally sitting on the couch. I have a, I have this pedestal base um, I use for some of my design projects and I've got a pattern. So I've made this little side table, but I have, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, this is my desk that, and that's honestly anymore. Like that's what I want my desk to be. Hey man, it's, it, it, it. it's a good way to live. Yeah. Uh, I, I think a lot of people would be envy of that. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, be, before we, before we head out today, I do yeah. want to make sure that people, um, can reach out to you. Um, what, what is the best way to do so both uh, at the physical shop and online? So the physical shop is by appointment only. Um, okay. The space I'm in, you know, I don't keep regular hour, I retail hours. Um, but my disclaimer with that, when I tell people, I don't ever want it to scare them away. I'm here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> being by appointment means you tell me when you're available and yeah. I can just tell you I'm going to be here unless <laughs> I'm doing an install. Uh, or picking the stuff up because I can pretty much tell you I'll be here. So shops by appointment. Um, if you go onto social media, my where I'm most active is going to be Instagram. Okay. Virtual. If you just search Birchwood Supply, it'll pop up. But it's Birchwood Supply Co. I'm also on Facebook. I have everything linked through there. Um, I communicate with people both, you know, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can get go to my website, which is still a work in progress after five years. Still haven't done what I want with it, but you can also email me through there. All my contact info is on Instagram. My cell phone's on there. All of that, okay, great. Um, you know, in the shop, if anybody ever wants to set up an appointment, you know, if somebody's coming in from out of town, whatever, I had somebody living down in Texas um, and they were blowing through. And again, it was kind of a afternoon kind of thing. He texted me. He's like, hey, and I go, I'm here. Come on by. <laughs> and they were literally, you know, they'll be, they were heading back down. Um, and you said you said the shop is in downtown Akron? Downtown Akron. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in a building. So it's the old BF Goodrich complex, but the building I'm in is called Bounce Innovation Hub. And okay. what it is, is uh, eight stories. There's tech, there's R&D, there's, we've got an urban farm in here. Cool. There's other makers in the space and the whole ground floor is co-working space for people. So they can, they can yeah. come in and space out. So people that don't have offices or just need to be, you know, mobile. Um, so it's a really great environment. I was actually just talking with on the second floor. There's an organization called Crafty Mart, and they work specifically with handmade uh, makers. And they're renovating their space on the second floor, and they just launched their Kickstarter. And I'm going to be doing some work with them. It's a really cool collaborative effort, That's and it's fantastic. It's about a, a 180 difference from where I was before in the old space, where I locked myself away and it was dark and dingy and <laughs> you know, the depression and all of that stuff. This is collaborative. This I can walk downstairs, I can see people. There's and it's just. You know, and these guys will bring their bicycles and their skateboards <laughs> on the weekends and and raise bloody you know bloody hell through the halls. Well, you know what, Jason, I think that's that's really cool. It's it's been really cool to to talk with you, um, and I think it's really cool that you have your boys involved um, with what you're doing as well. But you know, maybe maybe someday they'll want to be doing the same thing that you're doing. So hopefully, and if Mio wants to take, yeah. So no, it's that's that's the other fun part where it's. For me, it's a, it's a true family business. I, I didn't do this for them to inherit a, an empire because they won't, <laughs> um, but I wanted it to be an example to them. Yeah, uh, exactly. I was 30 when I, when I stopped doing what I was doing. And, you know, for a lot of people, that's dumb. And he's just dumb. You yeah. know, that's dumb to do that at 30. And I want this to be an example to them. And that's what I continue to try to do. Well, uh, again, I think that's really cool. And um, I'd love to see what you're doing. You know, keep it up. And uh, just, you know, thank you for, for being on the show today. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Chad. I really appreciate it. All right, man. Take care and uh, keep collecting. Yeah, you got it. All right. See ya. Bye. Well, all right. Hey, man, uh, that was a lot of fun. I uh, certainly want to thank uh, Jason Horinger for uh, being on our show today. 
Uh, I think Jason and I have a lot in common, and uh, it's really cool to see what he's been able to, uh, to put together uh, there in Akron um, with, his, uh, with his shop and all the design stuff that he's doing. Um, it a, really is a, is a family affair with what he's got going there, and I think that's really cool. So I uh, uh, certainly want to thank uh, Jason for being on the show today. And as always, I want to thank you guys for, uh, for watching. Um, thanks for uh, following along uh, with the collectors. And uh, if you like today's episode, be sure and hit that like button. And uh, be sure and share this out with your friends and family. And as always, uh, be sure and subscribe. And uh, then join us next time as we travel the country uh, in search of another unique collector and collection. Take care and keep collecting.